Folks, this is a broad-winged hawk. This is the smallest member of the Buteo genus here in North America. Technically, they do not breed here in Colorado, though I have to say this uh, past summer, uh, 2020, there was a documented pair of broadwing hawks breeding, I believe, up Left Hand Canyon, somewhere west of Boulder. Um, a lot of people find it hard to believe that this little guy is related to the big red tails and ferruginous hawks that we see soaring around. Broad-winged hawks are an eastern bird that migrate down to South America each year. And several dozen, probably really several hundred, kind of swing far west as they come from South America back up to the Midwest and the East Coast. Um, they are what I call a woodland buteo. That is not a scientific term, but these are buteos that have patterns, habits, and body proportions that are almost more like excipiters. We'll be meeting another one later on. This is a male. He is four years old, and I'll tell you why we have him in just a minute, but as you can see, he is an itty bitty guy. Now, he has been, in the summer, he drops to about 11 and a half ounces. Right now he is up to uh, 15 and a half ounces. Weights for wild birds range from about nine ounces up to about 17. Obviously the females are much bigger than the males. They're called broad-winged hawks because they really do have wings that are deep front to back or quite broad in comparison to their body size and that's super helpful if you're a hemispheric migrant and need to go from you know the upper peninsula of mission or northern maine all the way down to south america um, these are one of the species like turkey vultures that go by the Great Migration Point uh, in Veracruz, uh, Mexico. So literally thousands and thousands of broadwing hawks are seen each year. They call that um, the River of Raptors. And the broadwing hawk is sort of the species that we can thank for the great research and East Coast hawk watching site up at Hawk Mountain, Pennsylvania. These poor little guys were slaughtered by the thousands, sometimes 10,000 a season. Hunters would go up into that natu natural um, migration pinching point, the cliffs up in Pennsylvania, and just shoot them as they came by, mistakenly believing that they killed chickens. Now, as you can see by these feet, Broadwinged hawks are one of these species that has a very diverse diet. Um, in addition to all kinds of field mice and small mammals, they will take snakes and um, all types of amphibians, newts, salamanders, frogs, and they will take small birds as well, especially in the nestling stage because these guys live on the edge of forests, whereas just a few yards deeper in the forest, you may have songbirds like warblers nesting. And mom and dad broadwing go, oh, perfect flightless snack right there in the nest and they can pop in through the trees. I'm gonna turn him around a little bit so you can see his tail. Um, they have very thick bands on the tail. Um, he's a little bit more on the nervous side, so I'm not going to really open it up. But um, the striping sometimes, can we do this, reminds folks of Cooper's hawks. But they truly are black and white versus dark gray on pale gray. Um, this is one of only three Buteo species in the United States that has four marginated primaries on the wings versus five. Um, the other is the gray hawk and the Swainson's hawk. And if you take a look at the pattern on his front, he kind of looks like a Cooper's hawk. He's got that brown horizontal hatching that um, in him, in some, some broad wings, it almost looks like a bib. Thicker brown hatching above and then thin brown hatch marks or bars in the belly area. Um, his eyes are still sort of a khaki pale color. At four years old, normally his eyes should be a deep brown at this point. But as I've seen with several of the birds here at the Raptor Education Foundation, when they grow up in captivity, the color of their iris seems to experience delayed maturation. I've talked to a couple of big 
um, East Coast um, Raptor Rehab Institutes about this phenomenon. Some people have observed it before. Somebody needs to do a study on it. It's very anecdotal, but many people have agreed with me. He came into human care because when he was just about mm, few months old, right out of the nest, he suffered a fracture in his left humerus. He was in immature plumage and he was hit by a car. So he was rehabilitated at the Carolina Raptor Center, which is in Charlotte, and then sent to us uh, the following year. So our previous broad-winged hawk lived to, I think, 17 years old. Um, there are many raptor species that through banding recovery, we figure out, you know, can actually live uh, quite long lives. Um, the broad-winged hawk, that pair that bred this year in Colorado, is not the first recorded breeding in the state, but it is the first one in many, many years. So how do you tell what you're looking for? Well, if you are up in, you know, March, April, or August, September, and you see something that you think is a beautio, um, look for that sort of classic red tail wing shape, but on a small bird, and a very dark trailing edge along the uh, secondaries and the primaries. Look at the breast and belly. Now, if it's an immature bird, it's gonna be sort of that standard beautio, dark brown over pale cream stuff. But if it's an adult like this guy, you'll see something that looks like a Cooper's hawk. To me, it's the tail. It's a short square tail with very distinct thick black and white stripes. And the bird will just look out of proportion. It'll look like somebody stuck a tail on a B2 bomber. It's just all wing and they, um, they move fast. They, may, they move really, really fast. Um, they have now GPS satellite tracked broad-winged hawks and they average about 70 miles a day when they're going from the East Coast down to South America.